With American remakes of Japanese animes or Japanese remakes of American cartoons and sometimes countries in between, these are 10 weird foreign versions of animated properties. It's juice and jam time. I can't understand a thing you're saying! I hope you like the tea. It's so rare we have invited guests. Guests? Stitch, bow. Best yet. Um, hi. I'm Stitch's friend, Yuna. There's no place to rather be. Okay, are you ready for your childhood to be ruined? Because here's Stitch, the anime. Which doesn't look too weird. In this anime, Stitch gets sent to another dimension and lives on a whole new island. But wait a minute, who's this new girl that Stitch hangs around for the entire series? What happened to Lilo? It's Lilo and Stitch, not Lilo and Steve. Don't worry, they explain what happened in the first minute of the first episode. Just because little girl Lilo has a new boyfriend now and is all washed up with 626 is no reason to act bad. I got a cover, Jamal. What the fuck did you just say? Little girl Lilo has a new boyfriend now and is all washed up with 626. No! No! Don't shut me up! You do not just do that. You do not just shit on Ohana like that, you bastard one minute into this anime i feel so insulted how could they insinuate such things from lilo shit way to drop a bomb like that disney it'd be like watching the timon and pumbaa cartoon and explaining why simba was never around was because he became a coke dealer so is stitch the anime connected to the movie yes this anime takes place after the american tv series based on the movie with many of the same characters reappearing yet they don't feature any of the original voice cast despite there being an American dub. I was not fired. I was dishonorably discharged. Told you not to sing karaoke at the holiday party. It feels very cheap, like Disney didn't want to put in the effort into this and hoped America would never see this, so they got any rando off the street to voice these beloved characters. But with a close art style to the American show, we can see the different animation techniques used for each country. America has more in-between frames, characters actually moved as they talk, while anime is more limited in budget, less in-between frames as characters stand still, flapping their mouth. Again, this feels so cheap and careless. I'm glad it's obscure. Dunga haga blah blah. What does that mean? I don't like water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ninja Turtles the Anime, or as it's officially titled, Mutant Turtles Superman Legend. Yes, really. Now, this is not a TV series, it's an OVA, which is sort of a Japanese version of a miniseries or straight-to-video movie. In this piece of art, the turtles are visited by the anime fairy and given power crystals, turning the user into these big shoujo anime men. I was expecting them to have a Sailor Moon-type transformation sequence, but all they do is just yell, Yes, I agree. And now they're super mutants. It looks like they're posing for a Pepsi commercial. Included in this anime are the villains Bebop, Rocksteady, and is that Shredder? <laughs> Everyone gets the chance to super mutate into Shoujo's, but not so fast, Shoujo Jojo. Among the bad guys, they also fight what looks to be Sailor Mars in space, while they combine into a giant super turtle. <laughs> This is as anime as it gets. Mechs, ninjas, that one building Godzilla hates, you know the one, and the cherry blossom on top is the end credit song. According to the subtitles I got, these are the lyrics. Thanks, Japan. I must have faith in who I am. Anytime America makes a live action anime adaptation, it fucking sucks. Except maybe Speed Racer. Also heard Edge of Tomorrow was good, though that's based off a of manga. Things like Dragon Ball Evolution are pretty infamous, but how many of you remember when America adapted Fist of the North Star? Yeah. 
To my understanding, it's a manga and anime of this guy walking around, punching things, heads explode. Often it's compared to Bruce Lee in the world of Mad Max. Somehow, someone thought it'd be perfect for a live-action American movie in 1995. Why 1995? Dragon Ball and Pokemon weren't even popular in America. Hardly anyone knew what anime was at that time, let alone this anime. Yeah. I'm assuming this movie was made for the foreign markets as it got to theaters in other countries like Japan, but was banished straight to video in America where it was made. Fist of the North Star features expansive beautiful set design and scenery rivaling the most decorative Saturday Night Live skits. You can tell through the gore effects the filmmakers were trying their best to stay authentic but didn't have enough money or experience. Like why is everything zoomed in awkwardly? <laughs> Yeah, it's crappy, but they tried. Also, voice actor Dante Bosco is in this movie. Kick, 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 kick. Most will argue a live-action North Star or Dragon Ball could never work, but I still disagree. Something in the style of Kung Fu Hustle would be perfect for those animes. It's gonna happen one day, you just wait. They're gonna make a good live-action Dragon Ball movie eventually. Was much better, but you are still lacking precision. Before Bugs, before Mickey, before Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, what's said to be the first cartoon icon was Felix the Cat. But nobody cares about him anymore. His cartoons were trippy and surreal as a good cartoon should, yet his popularity dwindled for some reason. They tried giving Felix some specials and movies, but none really had any staying power, until Japan decided to make a Felix anime, which hearing that, I'd assume would be the most hardcore thing ever knowing what Japan can do. But instead, Japan gives us the Baby Felix and Friends show. Props to the intro for explaining this complicated premise. Whoa, he's Felix, but as a baby. Say what? Within the anime, the other characters refer to each other as Baby Felix or Baby, followed by their names. You can do it, Baby Felix. Just keep your eye on the ball. Come on, Baby Felix. Okay, Baby Kitty. Why would they do that? This is the only Felix they know. You don't always have to call him Baby. It's a bit odd and off-putting to pray to a baby. Well, look, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm saying grace. The animation is so awkwardly stilted, but they at least play into Felix's weirdness with these time travel segments where he meets his future self like a game of Sonic Generations. Hey, do I know you? I'm going to be in the big leagues one day. Oh, you are, huh? Why is baby Felix's voice much deeper than adult Felix's? No idea, but Japan, really? I expected an anime action show full of pointless violence and nudity, yet you give us another Baby Looney Tunes. Nobody wants to see this crap. <gasps> Now for a foreign reimagining not made by America or Japan, but instead from the mystical Asian land no one believes is actually Asian, India. Oddly enough, India loved Cartoon Network's Johnny Bravo so much, they made a new 11 minute short in 2009 and an hour long special in 2011. Both of them named Johnny Goes to Bollywood. This makes research really difficult since most of the results point towards the hour long specials. I can't find anything on the short, but yes, both exist according to the official website of creator Van Partable. We have to question, whatever happened to Johnny Bravo? In the hour long special, we catch up with Johnny Bravo as an out of shape has been looking to start his life over. So he moves to India to become a Bollywood star. Jeeps, 
pack your things. We're gonna go make us some Indian movies in Indiana. It plays very much like a normal episode of the show as Van Partible went out to Mumbai and Malaysia to help work on both Bollywood cartoons. Even Johnny and his mother have their voice actors return, but it really dates itself with parodies of Twilight and Avatar by James Cameraman. Those two things just aren't old enough to be nostalgic and not new enough to be current, so it just gives me this stale in-between taste. Reasons why it's hard to watch Ugly American sometimes. Prepare for me to insert my tail in your ear and make you my life bent. Oh, mama! This guy is the worst actor since since the guy from the real movie. Johnny Goes to Bollywood was never aired in America because much of the humor was tailored for people who live in India and would know what Bollywood is. And by 2011, when this was made, Johnny Bravo had been off the air for seven years in America, so all the kids watching this would have no idea who Johnny is, but it's still pretty easy to find the special online. <laughs> oh, the Indians are gonna love me. Johnny Bravo, Cartoon Network, de Mada Mada Tsukuyo. have dedicated their lives to fighting crime and the forces of evil! Now, the Powerpuff Girls' unique techno Hanna-Barbera style was also inspired by the limited animated action of retro anime such as Speed Racer. Fast, abrupt action, hardly any in-between frames resulting in the girls feeling fast and solid. <laughs> Cuteness on top of violence appeals to everyone. Why do you think Pokemon is so successful? The Powerpuff Girls were such a big hit internationally that they turned the violent American cartoon inspired by limited Japanese animation into a decently animated, not so violent Japanese anime. Kind of a misguided idea. So, what do you think it is today? Mojo! He's at a kindergarten! But why? Who cares? Let's go! This is Powerpuff Girls Z, where the girls are now friends and not sisters in junior high. And before they fight crime, they have these long-ass Sailor Moon transformation sequences with a disturbing amount of focus on their crotch region. From my experience online, I have this theory that if someone draws anime versions of American cartoon characters, they're secretly a pedophile. I've yet to see any evidence to debunk that. So it's Sailor Moon meets Powerpuff Girls. There isn't much punching here as the girls get their own weapons, like Bubbles has the power to create bubbles. Ooh, very dangerous. This is why my starter is always a fire type. <laughs> but if that's her power, does Buttercup use butter and Blossom use blossoms? No. Then what's the point? Powerpuff Girls is something companies rebrand so much without understanding why it was so great. Cuteness on top of violence. I've said this so many times in so many other videos and no one understands this. Who would have thought such innocent looking girls would have such incredible power? By the way, if anyone is still asking when's part two of my reboot retrospect coming out, I just want to say, I don't know. I don't want to be one of those people that makes 10 million rant videos on the same show. It's bad enough this topic appears so much on my top tens. I'm sorry. That's how it began, with the Powerpuff Girls protecting New Townsville and saving the day! Top Cat! The most effectual Top Cat! Ed, Ed and Eddie is swag, Top Cat is class. Top Cat, or as I call it, Top Keck, was about a gang of cats, or as I call them, Kecks, hanging in a picket fence alleyway trying to scam people and make a quick buck. It's one of my mom and I's favorite Hanna-Barbera cartoons, but in America, it's not very well known. Its original run only had 30 episodes and a TV movie, but it was in Mexico where this show found an audience. Why did it do better there? Personally, I lay the blame on Top Cat's sidekick, Benny the Ball. Here's how he sounds in America. I'm thirsty, Mr. Dibble. Can I have a glass of water? Water? Yes, sir. I always get thirsty in the middle of the night. Now listen to Benny's Mexican voice, here named Benito Poroque. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, yes! As America continues to ignore Top Cat like a baby in a hot car, Mexico has created two Top Cat movies for theaters, or as I call them, theatrical kecks. Time for my lunch appointment. The first one, Top Cat the Movie, is an odd blend of 2D flash animated characters and 3D backgrounds. The second one, Top Cat Begins, is a prequel that went full on CGI. I've yet to watch either, but the first one is notable for having the highest grossing opening weekend box office ever for a film from a Mexican production at 40 million pesos, which in American money, that amounts to $10. Or $10 and 5 kecks if you want to be specific. Now, where were we? Top Cat! Top Cat, the movie in perfect 3D. Where did you get this? The answer! Bust out your half-eaten Pocky and come encrusted anime figures because Despicable Me and its minions are anime now. Sadly, this isn't a TV show, but a 40 second long crossover advertisement with the soccer anime Inazuma 11. According to the Anime News Network, these ads were made not only to promote the first Despicable Me movie, but also inform the viewer of the changing time slot for the anime from 7.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Japan, you don't have to animate an entire segment for that. You can just make a commercial. But at least they tell kids when new episodes are coming out. Here in America, TV networks are just, hey, uh, a new episode will come out. I don't know, man. <laughs> How many times do I have to discuss this? The three American remakes of animes that were never made. First is the American Sailor Moon, where they mix live-action high school life with animated fantasy segments, and never made it beyond its pitch trailer and a lost episode. Ha ha ha! Missed us! <laughs> totally awesome stuff, Max! Failed American Remake 2, Gundam, renamed as Doozy Bots. They took the story about soldiers piloting mechs in a galactic war into a hip cast of high schoolers who transform into robots. One of the transforming kids also happens to be this boy in a wheelchair. Hey, being a Doozy Bot is fun! Even cleaning up Scuzzy's mess is no problem! <laughs> You mean to tell me you can transform him into a robot except the robot is on wheels too? What the heck? Well, handicapped kids need their heroes too. As with Sailor Moon, the Doozy Bots also never made it past its pitch trailer. Fake left, go right! And the last failed remake that had the chance to be good was the Kingdom Hearts cartoon, since the animation director, Seth Kersley, actually played the games. I got into more detail about it in this other video linked below, but yeah. Sailor Moon and Gundam. We can be thankful America realized it was more cost-effective to translate existing foreign shows than to make new ones. And now, the stars of four kids will sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see? Years ago, it was standard to bring over Japanese anime to American TV with several changes. TV standards differ for each country, and often executives don't care if several scenes of violence are removed, so long as they have something to fill a time slot on children's programming. They also don't mind replacing a three minute long Japanese intro pop song with a crappy one minute long American rap song that anime fans hate when in reality they were both shit to begin with. Here's how the story goes, we find out by the treasure in the grand line, there's no doubt. The pirate whose eye is on it, he'll sing, I'll be king of the pirates, I'm gonna be king. Now, Japan has done similar things with our shows, like Transformers Animated. Same show, new intro. All I can do. The intro is cool, yet I never cared for Transformers, but the better Japanese intro revamp was for the 90s X-Men cartoon. For anyone who suffers epilepsy and seizures, look away right now until I say when. Okay, you can look. Talk about false advertisement, nothing this awesome or well animated was ever in this cartoon, which is just the reality of 80s, 90s cartoon intros. But damn, it's radical to see American designs done with Japanese flair so well. X-Men, 
Really, this should play when you boot up X-Men vs. Street Fighter. I don't know if Japan did this for any other shows, but if they did, I'd love to hear about it. But let's end this story off on Japan and America working together. Some of you may be familiar with the teams of artists who work for Trigger and Gainax Studios, making some of the most over-the-top animes ever. Trigger Studios worked with America's Cartoon Network to create the Season 2 intro for Black Dynamite. <laughs> And did you ever see that Toy Story special, Toy Story That Time Forgot, a name that makes no sense, where Woody and the gang meet these 80s-style dinosaur action figures, the Battlesaurs? Well, Trigger animated a fake anime intro for those toys. Why an intro for a non-existent show? Look. It's Disney. If you had all this money, you might as well spend it on something good. Strange and powerful forces are attracting people to Pizza Hut. It's the Marvel Comics X-Men video with a mini comic book, pull-out poster, and trading card, all for only $4.99 with any pizza purchase. Oh, I'll wrap that up. Exclusively at Pizza Hut.